of the questions that we've had to really wrestle with that you probably, most of you, have never even asked. And, but it has a great, it has many implications for how we see ourselves and how we move forward. And that question is, is Eden Energy Medicine an organization or is it a movement? Okay, an organization has a mission statement. It has a purpose. It's really thought about that mission statement and that purpose, and it's translated into goals and translated into objectives, and it's hired people to carry out those goals and objectives in service of the larger mission. And that's what organizations do. A movement grows out of a wave from the larger river of humanity. And that wave is able to shift the course of that river. No individual, no organization can control it. And as it's turning out, Eden Energy Medicine is both an organization and a movement. As an organization, you need an organization to pull off a conference like this. You need to choose the keynote speakers that really are in alignment and able to articulate the vision of the mission statement. And 40 incredible concurrent sessions led by people who also are in alignment with that mission statement, and also many of them have been trained by the organization. And then a staff that is in alignment with that mission, and particularly in a service organization where there's not big bucks, is willing to work really hard through their own sweat of their own brow to help that mission come into being. As a movement, Eden Energy Medicine is spawned by the convergence of many factors in the culture and in humanity. The most important of them is that there is an urgent need right now for the democratization of healthcare. There's an, yes. There's an urgent need to empower people to take care of their own health, to keep them healthy, and to have avenues they can go when they need help. In the 1950s, which is the first time I can remember going to a doctor, the doctor was king. You did what the doctor told you to do. You understood your body and your illness according to the way that the doctor explained it. There was no internet to consult. There was no Eden Energy Medicine, no Reiki, no Touch for Health. When you weren't sure and you wanted a second opinion, you got that second opinion from another doctor. That is where you turned when you felt scared about your health. Now, in 2014, the authority of the physician is being questioned in a way that it never before has had to confront. So those of us that love this life that we have been given realize that we need to step up we need to step up to nurture and preserve our health. It's up to us. It's up to all of us in ways that were not in our, on our radar in the 1950s. Most of you have heard Donna talk about hearing from five different doctors, independent opinions, that her body had broken down so badly from her multiple sclerosis that each of them told her that it was beyond repair, it was going to continue to deteriorate. They told her 
to get her affairs in order. The impact that had on her was she mobilized every neuron in her brain, every cell in her body, every cell in her body to get well so she could raise Titania and Dandi. And she did. That was the democratization of healthcare in the microcosm of one person. And what she discovered, or what really, his, to make it more accurate historically, what she rediscovered was energy medicine. Think of a mechanic who has no concept of temperature, who is trying to fix a car whose malfunction is because of overheating. That is the relationship that the medical field, the conventional medical field, has with subtle energy. With the energies that Donna works with, with the energies that so many of you are working with. For the car, the malfunction was caused by overheating, but there's no concept, no concept of all of temperature. How do you fix that? For the body, the underpinning of all physical processes are subtle energies that the doctor was never introduced to in medical school. So the breakdown of those energies is at the foundation of illness and disease, while their optimum functioning is at the foundation of health and vitality. Correcting those energies is so non-intrusive that the physician's primary tools of drugs and surgery seem gross and primitive when used as the first intervention. Implementing what we are learning here at iGene could shift healthcare in this country could shift it in a very big way. <clears throat> Let's look at how that might happen. We can do it just through the most, the grossest lens. We could look, do it just through the most mechanistic lens of the economy. We believe, and we've thought about this a lot, we believe that if you do three things, you could cut the cost of health care in this country down to one-fourth of what it is without fundamentally changing the system. The system, of course, needs to change as well, but without fundamentally changing the system, three steps will cut the cost down to a fourth of what it is. The first is, before any invasive medical procedure, balance the nine energy systems in the person. And after the procedure, balance them again, because the procedure will knock those out. So balance them again. Before my brain surgery, you can bet that Donna was in there in the pre-op room, working on me, balancing me. She'd already done it at home, but she was doing it right there. We were afraid that they were, somebody was going to come along and say, uh, would you go to the waiting room, please? But what happened was a nurse came by when she was starting and said, oh, is that, is, is that um, therapeutic touch? And just walked on. So it's like this is becoming part of the culture. It's not so strange anymore. After my surgery, she was there, balanced me again. My surgery was in the morning. When the next shift came on, this happened twice, once with the nurse, once with the physical therapist. They came in, they looked at my chart, they looked at me, they did a double take, looked at the data on the chart again, said, you look terrific. Did you just have brain surgery this morning? <laughs> so I, kind of being pulled away from my email, Answering questions, though no doubt some of you had asked that our staff couldn't answer and had to send to me. <laughs> and I said, well, yes, it was brain surgery. Can't you see where the bandages are? We were told before I went in that it would be five, to seven, five days to two weeks in the hospital. 
The morning after the surgery, I walked out of the hospital with Donna one, on one side and the very pleased surgeon on the other side. For, <clears throat> so by doing this first step of balancing the energies before an invasive procedure and after, it not only makes it more likely the person will survive this procedure and survive it with less side effects and heal more quickly, and that the procedure will actually do what it's meant to do, but there's another piece to that. And the other piece, very important, the other piece is that when you balance those nine energy systems, you may notice that the symptoms are improving. And if you have a relationship with the surgeon where you can say, hey, why don't we give it another couple weeks where we're balancing this, and you keep doing it, and the symptoms keep improving, in a number of those cases, you're not going to need the invasive procedure. So that's the first step. The second step is to have someone in every doctor's office, every clinic, every hospital, who is able to energy test medication. Depending on who you read, but at least 100,000 and up to 300,000 people estimated die every year in the United States by taking medication the way it was prescribed. And it's not the doctor's fault. The doctor's working off of statistics. So say that this medication was tested on 2,000 people in the clinical trials, and it kills one person out of 5,000, and this was not detected, and you're that one person out of 5,000, you're going to be pissed. Okay? And an energy test could have shown that this was not going to be good for you. A simple energy test takes five minutes to do a simple energy test. So you could not only find out whether this is the right medication or if a different medication is going to work better, or you could find out what the dosage is going to be ideal, because dosage is a guessing game. So you can find all that out so simply. And it's not just a kind of new age intervention. There are four billion prescriptions written in the United States every year. That's 12 and a half per every man, woman, and child. That is amazing. So those two steps, balancing the energies before invasive procedures and testing before medication we believe would cut healthcare costs in half. Now, both of those are for people that have already entered the medical system. How about prevention? We believe you could cut it in half again if you would teach elementary school children, just like you teach physical education, just like you teach brushing teeth, how to balance their energies, how to recognize when something is off, how to recognize how to work with a symptom, like the symptom of a cold or a sore throat, how to balance their energies so that they are able, because everybody wants to feel good, we, none of us want to suffer. There's motivation to do that kind of balancing if it works, but it's not taught. So you guys are the ones that are out there teaching this to the world. So what we are so excited about having you here is iGene is kind of a concentrated place where a moment in time we can feel the knowledge, the camaraderie, the joy of putting these principles into being, putting these principles into being. You'll find as you go through the week that we are a very, very tiny organization in the scheme of things, but we are riding on the power of a very large wave. And that can give you confidence so that when you take this work out to a world that doesn't know that it needs it, you can hold the space so that that world that doesn't know it needs it winds up as a better world as a result of your efforts. And that's what this is about. Thank you. <laughs>